They've been served food that was spoiled or rotten. It has mucus and it has blood from someone who has AIDS. Is that safe? Every single step is used as a place to sleep. 50,000 inmates in a prison built for 400. They spend 23 hours in a cell, no sitting or talking. These are the 10 worst prisons in the world. Black Dolphin Prison, Russia. Russia's Black Dolphin prison houses some of the country's toughest, most violent criminals. Ask any Russian and they'll tell you how tough the prison system is in Russia. However, the Black Dolphin prison redefines the meaning of tough. The Black Dolphin is one of the oldest prisons in Russia, and it got its infamous name from the Black Dolphin sculpture made by inmates at the main entrance of the prison. The cells in this prison have three sets of steel doors. One door leads to a larger space where prisoners can exercise for 90 minutes daily. During this period, their cells are raided for contraband or illegal items. Inmates are also under 24-hour surveillance and supervision. They are not permitted to rest or sit on their bunks from the time they wake up until bedtime. That's roughly 16 hours of them just standing in their cells. And to ensure this is enforced, a prison guard goes around every 15 minutes to make sure no one's faulting. Newly arriving inmates are blindfolded so they can't map out the prison or plan escapes, while other inmates are also blindfolded when being transported between prisons. They're fed only soup four times a day, and when it comes to escorting inmates anywhere around the facility, these inmates are bent over while a guard holds their handcuffed hands behind their backs and higher than their hips. This is something you've probably seen before and it's a tactic that gives the guards total control of the prisoners as well as preventing them from knowing their whereabouts. The prison houses about 700 of Russia's deadliest criminals, including child molesters, murderers, terrorists, cannibals, and serial killers. But what earned this prison a spot on our list is that the only way to leave Black Dolphin is by dying. Yeah, you heard right. Irrespective of the crime committed, only convicts on life sentences are brought here. So for every day till they die, they'll be forced to stand with their hands. Ciudad Barrios Prison, El Salvador. This prison is home to the two biggest rival gangs in the country, the MS-13 and the 18th Street Gangs. The prison facility was built to house only 800 inmates, but as of 2012, it houses more than 2,500. That puts into perspective how bad the prison facility is. The cells are crowded with multiple inmates at the same time. And when it comes to feeding, it's some of the worst you can imagine. Before these street gangs took over this prison facility, normal prisoners were sent here, but it was in itself a form of death penalty because no inmate outside of a gang could survive here. They'd be killed by either gang. And due to the large number of inmates, it's hard to keep this facility under control. Prison guards were terrified of entering the premises, but now the El Salvadoran government has assigned members of its military to keep the place in check. This, however, doesn't change the fact that it is one of the worst prisons in the world. Comedy Maximum Security Prison The Comedy Prison is located in Nairobi, Kenya. During the 80s and 90s, many politicians found guilty of corruption were taken to this prison facility due to its openness to carrying out executions. However, apart from that is the harsh living conditions that come with this facility. This place is overcrowded and extremely dirty. It was built to house just 1,200 inmates, but reports say double that number are currently serving their sentences here. And this is paired with rampant health diseases plaguing inmates, including HIV, AIDS, gonorrhea, syphilis, tuberculosis, and dysentery. In November 2009, about nine inmates passed away from the cholera outbreak at this prison facility. To make matters worse, the prison has an industry where certain inmates are selected to work in. However, these inmates are paid only 10 cents a day for their hard labor in this so-called industry. Now, as crazy as that sounds, this is where things get very dark. There's a separate block called the G Block in Kamidi Prison. Now, this block houses the most brutal criminals in Kenya. And for that reason, little attention is paid to the overall well-being of these prisoners. And believe me, prisoners of this block are like walking corpses. There's a high rise in sodomy, sexual molestation of inmates, and mobile phone confidence tricksters. When this particular prison block was raided, many of the inmates were beaten beyond recognition. 
Until today, the Comedie is still the filthy, overcrowded place it has been known to be over the years. Yarbakir Prison, Turkey. September 24, 1996, wardens at this prison stormed into the cells of different inmates, killing about 10 of them and brutally injuring about 46 others. No one knew exactly the reasons why they did this, but their acts brought to light the extent of the brutality the prisoners face at this facility. Established in 1980, the Diyarbakir joined the long list of overcrowded prisons around the world. It's a special type of prison for Turkey's worst criminals. It has a capacity of about 700, but is said to house more than a thousand. But that's just one of the few good, or I mean bad things about this place. The wardens are using terms employed for acts of diversion and cleanliness such as disco, welcome, theater, or bathroom to describe the styles of torture they practice. Among the most brutal ones is a systematic beating of inmates, sleep and food deprivation for extended periods, solitary confinement, public piling of naked prisoners on top of each other, keeping of female inmates, stretching, squeezing, or crushing of limbs and genitals, electrocution, and worst of all, forcing inmates to bathe in prison sewers. I mean, this alone can paint a perfect picture of what life is like in the psychotic trench hole. A former female inmate at Diakabud Prison, and forgive my pronunciation, Naran Shamli Marushla, gave her testimony of what it was like inside the facility. We were 75 women in a ward for 25 prisoners. As women, we're not equal to men. But in Diakabud's dungeon, we were equal to torture, isolation, and military drill. For years, we did in prison what soldiers do in their barracks. Then Medizana, the former mayor of Diyarbakir, who spent 11 years in prison, explained what the ritual of new prisoners was like. He said, When a new prisoner arrived at the prison, Captain Isat met him at the entrance and turned to a guard and said, Prepare him a bath, then take him to the dormitory. This was a ritual, so almost 20 guards accompanied the prisoner. He received a good welcome beating and then he was dragged, unconscious, to the bath. A bathtub full of shit in which they left him for a few hours. And trust me, the level of brutality in this prison has actually reduced as compared to when it was established. Around that time period, 299 inmates died while incarcerated. 14 died during hunger strikes, 16 were shot to death because they were supposedly trying to escape from the prison, and people committed suicide. And the rest, well, life happened, guys. The Turkish government considered shutting down the facility and turning it into a school, but of course such an obscene decision received a wide range of criticism. San Quentin State Prison, USA These men are not here. They're not bad men, they have bad habits. They're not here because they're antisocial. Sometimes they're just too social. But then again, we can never trust them. San Quentin Prison is the oldest prison in California, holding the largest number of death row inmates in the U.S. It opened its gates in 1854, and since then, it's been home to a number of lethal criminals around the country. But what exactly makes this place one of the worst prisons in the world? Well, Actually, it's housing 105% over its capacity, with over 3,000 incarcerated in the facility. Aside from that, when you hear the name San Quentin, the word death immediately comes to mind. And that's because it has more than 700 male inmates awaiting execution in its death row unit, the largest number in the U.S. since 2005. However, there's more. The death row unit at San Quentin is divided into three sections. The quiet North Segregation Unit for prisoners who don't cause trouble. The East Block Unit, a very poorly constructed place within this prison. And the Adjustment Center Unit for the inmates classified as the worst of the worst. This adjustment unit is fortified with solid doors, preventing gunning down or prisoners from attacking prison wardens or outsiders with their bodily waste. This sounds crazy, but it's something these crazy criminals do. And if you check out our death row video, you can see why there's a religious and psychiatric section available for prisoners in this unit. Now when it comes to the types of execution at San Quentin, there's a gas chamber and a lethal injection room. However, sometime around the 90s, the gas chamber was closed down and only executions via lethal injection have been in use. And even though this facility only houses male inmates, 
Female inmates on death row are brought down here for execution. On the lighter side of things, the prison has a reputation for corruption and interracial riots that are encouraged by the guards. Bangkwang Central Prison Located 11 kilometers north of Bangkok is the Bangkwang Central Prison. This prison facility is the death row and execution chamber for the men of Thailand. Opened in 1933, the Bangkwang has executed hundreds of inmates, both foreign and nationals of Thailand. Within the facility, prisoners are expected to have leg chains for the first three months of their sentences, and then inmates on death row have their leg chains welded to their legs permanently. Although this practice isn't so popular nowadays, the living conditions at the Bang Kwong are horrible. Multiple inmates are compelled to share the same cell. Some inmates are malnourished, and others are denied proper medical attention. And as of 2018, the facility had had a total number of 6,000 inmates with 501 awaiting execution. Camp 14 Kechon, North Korea <laughs> It doesn't take much to be arrested in North Korea, but if you're sent to Camp 14 Kechon, whew, then that's one heck of another story. Kechon internment camp is a labor camp in North Korea for political prisoners and members of alleged criminals. The official name for the camp is Kwan Lee So, aka Camp 14. Established in 1959, Camp 14 was mainly built to keep political unreliable persons classed unredeemable by the North Korean government isolated from society and exploited for labor. And the crazy twist to this facility is that inmates don't even have to be criminals to be sent here. The type of people found here include inmates who perform poorly at their jobs, people who criticize the North Korean government, their children, or anyone who was born in the camp and anyone suspected of engaging in anti-government activities is to be taken to this facility. The camp has four housing sections, one for males, females, and one for older children. The idea is if members of the same family are all incarcerated at Camp 14, the prison guards send them to different units, making sure they'll never see each other again. And with over 15,000 inmates cramped into this facility, these family members may never cross paths till they die. Now, while incarcerated, inmates are forced to work in one of the different industries inside the facility. Inmates work from around 5 a.m. to midnight non-stop. Even as little as 11-year-olds are forced into this hard labor. With up to 15,000 inmates, there's always a food scarcity within the walls of this prison. Inmates are always emaciated, while many die of malnourishment, illness, work accidents, and the after-effects of torture. And this torture isn't limited to the male selection alone. And out of their will to not die from starvation, many prisoners resort to eating frogs, insects, rats, snakes, and even cannibalism in order to try to survive. One of the industries that these inmates can work in is livestock agriculture, and sometimes inmates eat the feed for the livestock or eat the rat flesh to prevent pellagra, a common disease in the camp resulting from the absence of protein or niacin in their diet. Alcatraz, USA Although this prison facility has long been shut down, the level of brutality administered on its inmates is still one that is unmatched by prisons around the world to this day. Opened August 11, 1934, the United States Penitentiary, aka Alcatraz, was a maximum security prison located on a small island, two kilometers off the coast of San Francisco, California. Due to its location and the high level of technology used in fortifying the walls of this prison, the Federal Bureau of Prisons believed it to be escape-proof. It had the worst criminals that the United States had seen at the time, and it didn't go down without having some of the most blowing prison escapes the nation had ever seen. There's the Battle of Alcatraz and the Escape from Alcatraz, two very dark attempts from the prisoners trying to escape the harsh conditions in this facility. But with its location in the middle of the cold waters and strong currents of the San Fran Bay, no one was ever recorded to live after escaping from this facility. Many say they drowned in the water, while others say they lived. We can't say which side of the story is correct, but the truth is, the conditions at Alcatraz were worth escaping from. Prisoners were subjected to a strict code of silence, where they weren't allowed to talk. 
Then the US government did a decent job in providing everything these inmates would ever want, but the inmates themselves were the real epidemic of the facility. One of these people is Robert Stroud, aka the Birdman of Alcatraz. In 1942, he entered that prison system at 19 and never left, spending 17 years at Alcatraz. Stroud killed a guard, tangled with other inmates, and spent 42 of his 54 years in that prison in solitary confinement. One writer described this prison as the great garbage can of San Francisco Bay, into which every federal prison dumped its most rotten apples. However, Alcatraz was shut down in 1963 and reopened as a public museum. ADX Florence, USA Boy, oh boy, if you're a fan of Crime Dynasty, you know a lot about the ADX Florence. But let's say you're not and run over some details of this max security prison one more time. The ADX Florence is the toughest security prison in the US. Opened in January 1995, the ADX Florence houses some of the deadliest and most ruthless criminals, including Mexico's most notorious drug lord, El Chapo. At ADX, Inmates are kept in solitary confinement for 23 hours a day, in a cell that's as small as a public toilet and equally as disgusting, if not even worse. Anyways, then for an hour, they're allowed out of their cells, into this open space to exercise, meditate, or do anything they want. This so-called open space can allow inmates to walk only 10 steps forward and 30 in a circle, so it's not as big as you might think. The cells have a one-inch slit window, and inmates have no idea where they are or what time of day it is. They also shower on a scheduled timer, and their beds are made of entirely poured concrete. Some inmates showing good behavior are granted a TV, with regulated programs, or a radio set. However, the effect of locking down humans for that amount of time per day causes many mental illnesses. Many inmates have expressed the effect of these levels of confinement on them, coupled with the different suicides that have occurred within this facility. Gitarama Prison, Rwanda There are many prisons on this list where overcrowding is a problem, but none can be compared to the level of overcrowding at the Gitarama Prison in Rwanda. This facility, established in 1960, is considered to be one of the most hellish places on Earth. It's located on the outskirts of Rwanda's capital, Kigali, and was designed as housing for British workers. However, it was later turned into a mini-prison to accommodate only 400 inmates. And the rest is history. In the 90s, during the peak of the Rwandan genocide, Gitarama was accommodating more than 50,000 prisoners. Like, just imagine how jam-packed this place must have been back then. Today, there has been a decline in these numbers of inmates, after huge concerns were raised by external human rights organizations but it's still overcrowded, with 7,000 prisoners still cramping themselves into tiny cells. Each prisoner is allowed only half a square yard of space, and records show that about a dozen of these inmates die every day from a vast range of diseases. Now, if that scares you, brace yourselves, because what you're gonna hear next will send chills down your spine. Due to the fact that this place was made for only 400 inmates, it's very hard to feed the thousands now present. So once an inmate dies in a cell, other inmates sometimes feed on their dead bodies in order to survive. And if the bodies decay, inmates bite off chunks of their flesh for themselves in order to survive. About 41% of them are found to have rotten feet from standing barefoot on the filthy feces-strewn ground. In more extreme cases, their feet and toes get rotten until it falls off altogether. There are numerous human rights violations in Gitarama and many other prisons in the world. And while you may argue that these inmates are criminals, it doesn't take away the fact that they're still human.